welcome to the Boston Roll channel. If you want to support my daily Eternal Magic offerings while getting amazing perks like the Boston Roll Discord community, have me play your deck on the channel, or list inside where guides before tournaments, check out the Patreon or YouTube membership program. This channel is possible because of these amazing sponsors. Check them out, all their links are in the video description. As always, thanks for being here. Let's go play some Magic. Welcome back to the Boston Roll channel. Today I'm playing Modern at the request of Patreon subscriber Diz. And I have been asked to build a deck that uses Narset Parter of Veils and Cephalid Coliseum to take control of a game. The interaction here is Cephalid Coliseum, a card originally printed in Odyssey, pretty old, but brand new to Modern from Modern Horizons 3. Once you have Threshold, you can make target player draw three cards, then discard three cards. The interaction with Narset is your opponent can only draw one card per turn. So if you Cephalid Coliseum them in their upkeep, they draw a card, only one, not three, and then they still have to discard three. So if they start their turn with two or fewer cards in their hand when you do this, they will have to draw a card and then discard all of the cards in their hand in their upkeep. Then they go to their draw step and they can't draw a card because they already did, and Narset says they can't do any more. Then if you can recur this with any kind of way, like Life from the Loam, Crucible of Worlds, or Ren and Six, your opponent just doesn't get to draw cards for the rest of the game. And because the draw and the discard on Cephalid Coliseum are all part of the ability of resolving, they can't even zap out an instant in the time they briefly have the card in their hand because there's no priority. It's all during the resolution of Cephalid Coliseum. Diz challenged me to build around this interaction, and then in a coincidence of fortune, Patreon subscriber Barrett reached out and was working on this exact kind of interaction and wanted my help working on it. So Barrett and I did some work on the deck together. Barrett came in with a rough list. I helped update it. Barrett took it back into the wild, came back, and then I did some further updates on the list that Barrett was working on. And this video ends up being brought to you by Diz, Barrett, and me. And where we decided to put this interaction is just in a nice little rug control deck. This is a very simple kind of old school one for one interaction. We've got counter spells, we've got lightning bolts, we've got impulses or growth spirals in planar genesis. Brazen borrower to bounce stuff, Tishana's Tidebinder, just taking the pressure off until we can suddenly flip it and get the hooks in in the mid or late game. The one for ones in this deck are offset by a bunch of two for ones in Questing Druid, Expressive Iteration, Ren and Six, Narset's a two for one. Because we're a Ren and Six deck, we also get a bunch of cool lands. We've got multiple Surveil lands. We've got a Triome, Ottawara, Baseju, the Coliseum itself. Argoth Sanctum of Nature is here alongside Titania, Voice of Gaia. And the reason for this card is Barrett found in his testing that you sometimes just run out of life points right before you're stable, especially with Prowess being a popular deck in the format right now. And this passive source of life gain comes in pretty big on a creature that has pretty good stats. And since we're doing this anyway, might as well pop one Argoth into the, the package. This is pretty simple stuff. It's just, you know, classic control. If it's going to kill you, stop it. And then start drawing cards until you get the hooks in and you win. I'm excited to play this. This type of deck is entirely my jam. Let's get after it. This is Ragnar set from Diz. I'm on the draw in round one. My hand's a little awkward, but I am going to keep it. You don't really want the Snapcasters until later, most of the time. But it looks like we're playing against some sort of Nadu strategy. Be a great time to draw a Lightning Bolt. Argoth's Sanctum of Nature. Well, I can't play that for a while because it doesn't cast any of my spells. Got a Springheart and Tuco. And a Fetchland, a Ramp. There are two Brotherhood's Ends in the main deck. That was a decision partially because getting run over was part of the concern of the deck. And what sweeper we played, I don't love that Brotherhood's End hits Planeswalkers because I am a Planeswalker control deck, but my Planeswalkers might not come down until later. And playing something like Anger of the Gods doesn't hit the Planeswalkers, but there are decks like Eldrazi Tron in the format, right? Throughout the artifacts part of Anger the God or of Brotherhood's End, so a little pro and con there. 
I was busy narrating. I probably could have got them with a fetch on their end step and they would have one less insect, which actually does matter a lot for Court of Calling. So I, I kind of blew it there. Busy talking instead of gaming. Right, wall of Roots. This is definitely a Nadu Cord combo deck, though. They spring Heart and Tuco. The next lands can start making copies of Wall of Roots if they're going to start pumping mana into that. Urza Saga. I played a version of this deck, a very early prototype version of this deck on the channel when MH3 first came out. And I am convinced that that build at the time sucked, but the technology has advanced a lot. And we'll see what people are doing now. Okay, so one, two, three, four, five. They could not have corded for Nadu even if they didn't attack, so I'm not going to read that they have Nadu there. I am going to get my Hedge Maze. Beseju. That can kill Shuko. That's really important, actually. I will keep that around, even though it does mean I'm taking beats for a turn. Killing Shuko or Springheart and Tuko are both reasonable things to want to do. I think it's Shuko, though. Like, if they cast now to cast Cord here, I'm going to Beseju the Shuko. And I know Saga's about to pop, so that's not a long term solution. No, oh, yikes. Another one. Okay. You're getting a bunch of bugs here, or a bunch of wall of roots, depending on how they want to sequence this. But they are empty, which means I'm less worried about Nadu. In the wall of roots, copying it like this is worth a ton of mana. Yeah, I think I'm actually going to hit one of the Nantukos with the Maseju now that I know they don't have Nadu. I'm definitely falling behind here, just to the bugs. So they got Lush Portico right before a fetch land resolves anyway. Got rid of a Windswept Heath, so actually got a reasonable surveil. And they didn't select their top card at all because they're about to shuffle anyway, but they did clear a card that they wouldn't have wanted anyway. Dried Arbor is another creature. Yeah, if they find a Nadu Accord, uh, Eldritch Evolution, anything that finds their way to Nadu, I'm in a lot of trouble here. They also just have eight power in play. And it can become nine if they tutor another Shuko. I could snap bolt something. But that doesn't actually help me stabilize. I think I'm going to EI and just hope to find something useful. Okay, I think I want Planar Genesis in my hand. Stern Scolding on the bottom, Exile Steam Vents, and then Shock it in. It can Brazen Borrow, it could Spell Snare, it could Planar Genesis. Yeah, Triple Spring Heart Nantuko is a lot of material. Just fair and square. Making a Construct. Tutor another Shuko. Jesus. Oh, okay. Coiling Oracle House. Like, if you drew Nadu, I'm going to freak out. Outrider and Core. Yeah, I mean, the combo's ready if they ever find Nadu, which they don't even need. They're attacking for eight here. I can bounce one of the 2 1 bugs to have higher life total, or I could Planar Genesis and try to spike. Yeah, I think I'm going to try to Planar Genesis my way into one of my sweepers. That's my only real way out of this. Bouncing one of the bugs here and being at four instead of two is not going to change my life. All right, Planar Genesis, bring me home. Oh my god. Uh, do I want to put a land in tapped or do I want the EI? I must want the EI, right? EI would have to hit Brotherhood's End and an untapped red source that doesn't kill me, which I don't play. I guess I'm putting Ketria Trium into play and going to my turn. Is there any out here? Nope. Yeah, uh, this was way too slow for what they were doing. Okay, Nadu deck confirmed. Disruptor Flute is here specifically for Shuko. Take Your Poison can kill Nantuko's and Nadu's and Urza Saga's. Subtlety can keep one of those things out of play. This matchup's not really about life total. I don't think I'm going to screw them with Days Undoing. Tidebinder's great. I like Counterspell. Spell Snare hits Nantuko. Coiling Oracle. Stern Scolding. I'm not interested in. Spell Pierce can hit Cord. I still don't think that's where I want to be. Raisin Borrower is one of the very few pieces of interaction in my deck. I think Questing Druid is probably bad. Meltdown, uh, yeah, they're a Urza Saga deck, and I can hit the Shukos. I gotta make room for Meltdown in here. But with the Brotherhood's End, pick your poisons and flutes. That's a lot of hate for that, but I think that's okay. And this deck's not going to Blood Moon me, and I play a lot of lands, so I can cut Basic Forest. Okay, 
Uh, this hand, I like. I will keep it. I like the Counterspell. I like Tidebinder. Both of these are good cards in the matchup. And Besaju's got text. If I can find a green source, Thundering Falls, Renin 6 right on the tippity top. This card is eventually part of the plan, even though slamming it doesn't do a whole lot here. We've got a Windswept Teeth, Arboreal Grazer. Off we go. There's a Saga's in. Okay, I could put Ren into play just so it's there. Or I could hold off Counterspell. I think Counterspell is more important. Arboreal Grazer, yep. That was not in the build that I played a couple weeks ago. Already a big innovation. They just played a land and didn't do anything. That's smart. Okay, I could chalk in Steam Vents. I think that is what I want to do. This Beseju still has a lot of juice on it, I hope. And I'm actually going to stifle their fetch land here. That stops them from making constructs and casting Nadu becomes harder. I could let them do a bunch of stuff and then they have constructs like stifle the Nadu. But the thing about Nadu is it gives all your creatures that ability in, on their own. So unless they target Nadu first, they're still going to draw a bunch of cards. A recording for Dried Arbor in the end step. Nope, you can't do that. Okay, they revealed they have Cord in their hand, but can't actually Cord because Urza Saga taps for colorless. Okay, so they're holding a Cord of Calling. We'll see if they can tutor Shuko and put Nadu Na into play this turn. If they have a land drop plus Nadu, they're just in. Okay, they have the land. If they have the Nadu, we've probably lost. Oh, I could counter the Shuko. That activation with Tidebinder. Okay, so they're just running out Thassa's Oracle. They fetched a source of mana that is not green. That's really interesting. Okay. They just played out a creature that can beat Tishana's Tidebinder in combat and then move their Shuko. I will block. Okay. Green source? All right, I'll take it. I'm just going to play out of a Seiju. I can activate the other one, and I could Tidebinder plus Spell Snare. I'll trade if they want to block. I know they have Court of Calling in hand. Yeah, that's a fine deal. And they're already at 10 from all their fetching and shocking. Got your own Besaju now. You can cord for two. Yeah, I'm just chilling. I'm not casting any spells if they're not. What's the rush? Hey, Tidebinder's attacking again. Still no block. Argoth. I have Snare plus one other thing here. Probably have to counterspell this. What is this get, Nantuko? I can just kill Nantuko with Besaju and still have counterspell up. Wall of Roots, okay. That one I cannot kill with Besaju, but I'm also less worried about it. Okay, they have a second cord. Glad I held on to this counterspell. Yeah, they could have Veil of Summer. That would be really bad. Let's hope they don't have it. Cool. Another Shuko, don't care. I mean, that does make my Besaju in hand a lot worse. So I care a little bit. Or I have Renin 6 that I plan on casting this turn. Am I casting it? Yeah, I can still tie Binder. All right, yeah, I'm going to... Zap one of their Shukos. I know this ramps them, and they have Lush Portico. But if they don't have a Shuko, they can't do anything. There's the Portico. And another Shuko. Okay, red, green. Buyback, Beseju. Okay, I can answer many of the things their deck might do. They're moving Shuko over. That's fine. Putting two damage on Renin 6. That's also fine. Skyclave Apparition, I will be stifling that. Let's see what they even target with it. Attack Ren, then exile Ren. Do I care about Ren? I don't not care about Ren. Yeah, I'll uh, I'll tie bind this. I think they're low enough on resources, I don't need to hold this back. And with them at 4 life, I would like to push. I have two lethal attackers right now. I mean, they have two blockers, but the Ren, the extra ping, is really nice. I'm going to start with Expressive Iteration. Let's see if I find a lightning bolt or something that can win the game. I can make them sack an artifact. All right, poison in hand, Ren on the bottom, exile Scalding Tarn, play the Tarn. If I attack with both of my creatures, they have to block them both. We trade off with the Apparition, we finish off Wall of Roots with a Ren ping, and then we make them sack Shuko. And pick your poison, sacrifice an artifact. Play Ketria Triome. Oh, no, I played a land already. Yeah, that's right. Ketria Triome's going to stay in my hand. Holding up Besaju and Spell Snare. Go ahead. We got him. Big Spell Snare. Yeah, the Tilt Scoop to Spell Snare. You'll love to see it. 
Okay. Let's revisit this. Was it right to cut a forest? I did spend a lot of that game wishing I had a green source. Maybe that was just reckless at the end of sideboarding there. Panicked. Did a foolish thing. Narset is part of my game plan, but she's also not very good in the matchup just straight up. My opponent's card advantage is not in the form of card draw. So I will chill on that and get my land back in. I like my hand. It has good mana. It's got a flute, a counter spell. It has a fetch land, so Ren and Six actually does something. Now it has subtlety, just in case I need to interact on turn one here. That's not it. But this Disruptor Flute is getting better every second. I think I want the Thundering Falls. Yeah, red is what my hand is currently missing. I have a bunch of blue and green. Tishana's Tidebinder, proving excellent. Let a Grove pass. I have Flute and Counterspell up right now. I'm not going to tap out for Ren and Six on a board where they could shove Nadu and flip two cards. Edge Maze kept the card. I don't think they've seen Counterspell yet in all the games we've played. Halfling resolves. Self and Safekeeper. I don't think I care about that either. Uh, I'm going to flute naming Shuko now before they can equip these. Uh-oh. Do you have Spell Pierce in your deck? That would be such a beating. Oh no, they're just using their fetch land. That makes sense. But that's not what I'm naming. Shuko. Now you're going to have to sack lands if you want to activate your Nadu. Which I still have a counter spell for, but you have Hapling, so I guess that won't work. I have two Besage, so I can play out one of them. All right, they got two cards left. Let's see what they are. I will counter a Court of Calling like crazy here. Hate to play out Ottawara, but that's how I get Ren and Six into play. Green, red, Ren. I still have up counter spell and subtlety, just in case. Get back my Scalding Tarn. Okay, here we go. Moment of truth. Can you pressure me in my end step and then untap and win? End step pressure confirmed. I will be countering this cord. Shout out to my opponent for the original Ravnica Court of Calling. Excellent taste. What are your last two cards in hand and do they kill me? The Avamai is okay. One more card, fingers crossed. The Disruptor Flute has already saved me several damage and it's keeping Ren alive right now, even if they don't have access to Nadu. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. Well, Ren's dead. That's okay. They are now Hellbent, and I'm not impressed by what they're showing me. See you later, Ren. If only there was another one in my hand. Lightning Bolt. Okay, I can just clear their board here. How about that? Okay, how do I have to sequence my mana? Because the Flooded Grove is a little awkward. I do have the help of Yavamaya, so maybe it's not that awkward. The Scalding Tarn has to be red. Green, red, red. Oh, okay. No, it's fine. Because of their... Or if they sack their Yavamaya and level me, I'll never live it down. Okay, I'm going to turn green into green, green. Then I'll use this blue. I'm going to disrupt her flute, leaving a green floating. And I'm going to name Sylvan Safekeeper. And then replay Ren and Six. Kill the Safekeeper, and they can't save it. Fetch. Shock with Steam Vents because it's also a forest. Lightning Bolt Halfling and hope they don't top deck Nadu right now. Pass the turn. Hellbent opponent. Court of Calling doesn't get Nadu. I even have the subtlety if I need it. Cool. They just whiffed and now we are in control gaming mode. Ren and Six ticking up versus an opponent who's not doing anything. That's what I want. That's where I want to be. They're just drawing lands. I'm going to fetch Hedge Maze. Expressive Iteration right on top. I'm not going to slam in this Tidebinder just to start pushing damage. They're a pseudo combo deck, and I want to respect that. Iteration. Oh, that's fun. Snapcaster to my hand. Expressive Iteration on the bottom. Exile Brotherhood's End and name Artifacts. Ren, get back Scalding Tarn. Fetch for a red source. Another Steam Vents. I am taking a bit of damage from this, and this does kill my flute, but I already killed the thing that my flute was on. Destroy the artifacts. Okay. And pass the turn. Now I don't care if they top deck Nadu. Urza Saga. That card would normally be good, except I have Besaju and Ren going. Besaju this in the end step. They can't get Dryad Arbor, but I could just pick it off with Ren. But they have Pendlehaven to save it, but I have Lightning Bolt. Okay, yeah. I'm not worried about Dryad Arbor here. 
Ren will pick up a Seiju. And I am in complete control of this game right now. I'm probably going to get into some bolt, snap, bolt, end game here, start dealing damage. Snapcaster is my counter spell, though. Probably not going to snap bolt right away. Nadu, Winged Wisdom. I'm going to cast Subtlety. This is just the one that adds the most pressure. They put Nadu on top, which means I can besage you one of their lands for free and they can't shuffle. And yeah, they're, they've just scooped it to, to all this. Yeah, cool. This deck worked exactly how it was supposed to. Don't die, don't die, don't die. Suddenly I'm way ahead. Didn't do anything with Narset or Supply Coliseum in the first match, but that's okay. It's just one of the things the deck does. This video is sponsored by Moxfield.com, the easiest way to build magic decks online. Moxfield supports over 30 formats, including Legacy and everything else you'll see on this channel. There's multiple customizations so you can interact with your deck how you want. Views such as text, grid, or stacks, and groupings like type, subtype, color, color identity, even artist. The site offers light mode, dark mode, and so much more. However you want to see your deck, Moxfield can provide it for you. Follow my Moxfield to keep up with the channel and what I'm playing in paper. I'll see you there. I'm on the draw for round two. I don't like Days Undoing in my hand, but I like every other card. I am going to keep Scalding Tarn. Sacred Foundry. Okay, Sacred Foundry could be Burn or it could be Ruby Storm. Ragavan's here. I will be shocking in this Steam Vents to handle Ragavan. And I'm going to wait for combat. If they play uh, Steam Vents and Counterspell me, then that sucks. They got me. They Mana Tithe me. They got me. But at least they're not going to dash a Ragavan into me. Guide of Souls. Okay. So this is some sort of uh, scam adjacent Soul Sisters thing. Oh, that was a really good draw. Not a moment too late. Kill the Ragavan. The Guide of Souls isn't even big enough to finish off the Ren. Okay. These opening turns went about as good as I could have ever asked. Now let's uh, not get too far behind and start pulling ahead. A Johnny. All right, we're going to read this one. Enters the battlefield, make a 2-1 Cat Warrior. Whenever one or more other cats you control die, exile a Johnny, and it becomes a Planeswalker. Plus one, plus one on each cat you control. Create a 2-1 Cat. When you do, if you control a red permanent other than a Johnny, he deals damage equal to the number of creatures controlled any target. Minus four, each opponent chooses an artifact, creature, enchantment, or Planeswalker from among the non-land cards they control, they sacrifice the rest. Wow, Cataclysm is the... The extra words and the extra creature made the Guide of Souls into a unit. Well, that was a good turn. Okay. Uh, there's a lot going on here. I'm going to express a federation. I want Tidebinder to my hand, land on the bottom, exile different land, play the land, and I'm holding up Spell Snare or a Stern Scolding. And I can Snap Bolt a Johnny next turn. Amped Raptor. Spell Snare and Stern Scolding both work on this thing. I think Stern Scolding is likely to be less useful than Spell Snare, though that is close. Like, Guide of Souls is a card we've seen. Flage is a card I expect. The new, the third entry in the Uro cycle. Okay, Lightning Bolt just down and dirty. I think Snap Bolting in combat is still the way to go. They can, like, bolt their own cat to flip a Johnny. Yeah, I think I should just snap bolt a Johnny right now while they're tapped out. I don't want that to become a Planeswalker. Yeah, this 3-4 Flyer is going to be a problem, though. We got a little Lightning Bolt action of their own. One card left in hand, but they're casting spells with it. I feel pretty dead here. Yep, there is Flage. That puts me to one on board. This costs three to do. Yeah, I'm at one, which is not very much life. I guess I pass the turn and hope they make some sort of mistake. Oh, does this trigger whenever you, yeah, whenever you attack? I don't think it has to happen. So this trigger goes on the stack, which means I can stifle it. And then this thing loses flying. It's still huge. A temporary stopgap. Oh, I block. Oh, wait. This should not have flying. I think this is just timestamps. Gain ability and lose ability. These should be happening on the same layer. Or is this a flying token? Oh, it's a flying counter. Okay, never mind. Uh, no, th th uh, they are doing it correctly. I'm just dead. All right. Yeah, it's a flying counter. If it said it gets plus two, plus two, and gains flying, 
this that would be layers, but it's not layers. It's a different thing. Okay. All right. So we have red, white magic cards. Endurance does interact with the graveyard where we saw Flage, and it also just has a big butt. Pick your poison can punish anything they send into the air, but if they don't send things into the air, this card seems pretty mid. Brotherhood's End seems good. Titania's passive life gain is good. And once again, the Narset and the Dazeland doing seem like the worst things I'm doing. And then Planar Genesis can back off, or Spell Pierce is probably worse than Planar Genesis. Subtlety is good against the, the Titans. Planar Genesis is one of the cards I was most excited to play with, but it does not seem like it's going to hold up in this matchup. I think I just want to spend my mana most of the turns to put big things into play. Oof, tough, tough mana situation, but I am going to keep. I'm going to have to come up with double red before this Brotherhood's End is online, but I can do everything else that my hand does. Narset. Ugh. There's only one of these left in the deck if I surveil this. This card is just not good. Not good for the matchup. I hope it's good somewhere because we built our whole deck around it. And there's a Ragavan that I have no chance of killing. Okay, never mind. I have one chance of killing. It's probably better just to let them hit me, hold up Counterspell, and then put Endurance in front of this thing next turn. Yeah, I'll just take a beat. Exiled Misty Rainforest. There goes one of my red sources. Blood Moon. Well, I sure am glad I have Counterspell available. I was not prepared for this. I do have a basic forest and brought in my pick, the poisons. Okay, passing with endurance up. Oh, I shocked in the breeding pool, so they know I have something here. I'm going to cast endurance, and I'm actually going to target myself with the trigger. I don't want them to have Blood Moon back in their deck, but I'll take my Narset and Counterspell back. Okay, let's see if the big butt holds the fort. Lightning Bolt's fine. We take two for ones. Something's happening. Unlicensers. Okay, I don't really care about that. Oof. All right. Well, two red cards in my hand and then a bunch of blue cards, several of which are not very good right now. Okay, Flage, Titan of Fire's Fury. Yeah, this is just a lightning helix with me at 16. That's fine. And Subtlety is a huge blowout if they try to escape that thing. I think I'm going to just drop in the Brazen Borrower. Or is it Snapcaster? Yeah, Snapcaster is worse than Borrower here. I just want to start pushing back somehow. Okay, Red Man is unlocked, and so is Hardcast Subtlety. Feeling much better about my life at this point. The best thing I can hope for is they just slam a fetch land and shove Flage onto the stack. That reduces all of their resources to very little. And Fable the Mirror Breaker dodges all of my current interaction. My plan here is to seek the beast and reason borrow in the end step. They have lots of green and lots of blue. I don't think this matters. I'll get steam vents. And then seek the beast. Maybe I'm supposed to do this in response just in case I hit the spell pierce. Yeah, that would be really embarrassing. Yep, hit a counter spell. Feel like a genius. Petty theft, your goblin. Yeah, if I was just going to do that, I should have done it in response. Now this counter spell is going to burn off. Bad. Okay, play Misty Rainforest from hand. Attack for two. I'm going to save the Questing Druid because I want to hold up Subtlety this turn. The Beseju can answer the Fable. Discarded Static Prison. Either Hub. Energy Theme, full effect here. Amped Raptor. I think this is fine. They can cast a 3-drop. They found a Johnny. Brotherhood's End cleans all this up. You get a 2-1. Okay, end step, I'm going to destroy Fable of the Mirror Breaker and fetch the Red Surveil Land. Another Beseju. Is this a card I want? I don't think so. And now I'm in the spot where Flage just obliterates me if I tap lower than Subtlety Mana. So I'm just going to try to hold my own in combat. Oh god. This dog. Exile up to one other target on land permanent. Uh, this is one, two, three, four, five, six, seven damage to me. I go to two. Oh my god. All right, well. All right, yeah, that's when it attacks. Yeah, I'm going to be one mana short of stabilizing this game, it seems. And the best thing I can hope for is they just ram flage pre combat. But if they play careful here and just don't commit anything that doesn't 
change the clock, then they're fine. Okay, so this is going to legend rule. Or no, no, it just makes another cat. All right, that's fine. I'm going to block the dog. Trade off with that thing. I go to five. Now Johnny will come back and make another cat. Oh, uh, flash bang on top of the deck isn't even a solution because they can still just zap me. All right, they flipped Fable and they can cast it. Jesus, this deck is cool and my deck is not lining up well against it. Okay, now they're playing the flage. My patience rewarded. You settle T from hand. You can put that on the top or the bottom. You probably just still want it. Went right to the top. Johnny comes back. Okay, I can kill all this shit. If I fetch, I'll be at one instead of two. Oh, I lose to unlicensed hearse anyway. Yeah, I'm just dead here. Uh, I better fetch something good. Catch her a triome. Or wait, I could play Questing Druid. No, okay. I'm not quite dead. But a spell would be nice. Tide Binder. Okay. That's actually kind of really good. Attack you with subtlety. And Brotherhood's End to deal three to the creatures. These are all gone. And they're drawing for turn Flage. And they can immediately discard Flage and then bring it back. I can Tidebinder the trigger when it comes back and then block on Licensors. I'm, I'm just kind of slightly behind here. Or I could let them have Flage and then kill the unlicensed hearse. Can I go to one here? Yeah, I can't go to one here. So this will lose abilities temporarily. They just immediately crew the unlicensed hearse. I have to jump block and then Flage has its abilities back. Yep. Now I gotta solve this problem. This card's very cool. This is the first time I've gotten to play against it, and it has been crushingly good. Stern scolding. Yeah, no, that's not it. Okay, super dead. Very cool deck. Uh, lined up extremely well against what I was doing. Did not give me time to set up my dirtily engines. And this is a dirtily deck. On to the next one. The Bosch and Roll channel is proudly partnered with the Resleevables. Hmm. Good. All right, here we go, gang. In this YouTube series, hosts Cedric Phillips and Patrick Sullivan take us on a set-by-set -set journey through the good, the bad, and the ugly of Magic's history. Each episode is a focused deep dive into the facts about a set's design and release. The magic lore expressed through the cards in that set. Tournament edition gameplay videos featuring products and Pro Tour decks of the era. An award show that shouts out the best and weirdest cards of the set. And a final grade for the set's overall success. Whether you want a history lesson or a nostalgia hit, The Resleevables has it at youtube.com slash The Resleevables. I'm on the draw for round three. I will keep my hand. It has the cards that are in my deck in it. A forest, a hardened scales, okay. Main deck Brotherhood's End, save me. Okay, Spell Snare and Spell Pierce available to me here. Spell Snare hits most of the cards in this deck. I think I just shock in Steam Vents to kick this off. Save my Misty Rainforest for a potential Surveil Land later. Stink Moth Nexus. Pinning Needle. Is this going to name Ren and Six in the Blind? I don't know. I would besage you probably. And they see Steam Vents. They don't know I'm a green deck yet. Yeah, just naming Scalding Tarn. I'm going to Spell Pierce this Hardened Scales. Yeah, blind name makes Scalding Tarn. I mean, 50 50. Uh, I mean, they, they didn't know I'm a green deck. If they think I'm just Merc Tide, that's probably a good call. I'd rather hold up Counterspell or Spell Snare this turn. Boo, boo. I'm not going to Counterspell that. Using the Spell Snare or Spell Pierce is one thing because they don't have that many hits for it in the deck. But spending an actual Counterspell on that, no thanks. I will put Counterspell on top of my deck. I'm about to hit all my land drops for the rest of the game, so I can afford it. And I'm actually going to play Titania and pass, leaving up my interaction here, rather than play Ren, because I can play Ren and hold up Counterspell next turn. Like I can Counterspell now, and then Ren Counterspell next turn. And if I can keep stuff off the board, that's where I want to be. Welding Jar, okay. Spell Snare from the top rope. 
Let's go. Their permanents are all much scarier when they're in play than when they are on the stack. And there's the Brotherhood's End right in the main deck. And this is exactly one of the matchups where Brotherhood's End is much better than Anger of the Gods for that deck building consideration. Counter spells up. I could also seek the beast in the end step if I want to start getting pushy. I could also just get the Thundering Falls. Savaz the Glimmer Wasp. This thing arrives enormous and stays that way. I'm going to get a basic island and counterspell this. They might be at the spot where they can double spell, and if they have two things to do, then they have two things to do, but they've been kind of developing slowly. Yeah, the fourth hardened scales, sure. Kind of regret spell piercing the first one. It just would not have mattered at all. Hey, Planar Genesis looking cool here. Like I said in the deck tech, the idea, the goal is to one for one, one for one, one for one, and then start going off with two for ones. And I have Questing Druid in my hand. Planar Genesis can dig. Ren's gaining value every turn. All right, can I get an absolutely not out of this thing? And then I'm going to Genesis with my open mana and then fetch the Thundering Falls. Or is Questing Druid better here? Questing Druid can start pushing damage. Once again, I should have thought about this first, because if Questing Druid hits a counter spell, then I get to keep this one. I am going to seek the beast, though. That was a another mistake. Hit two Misty Rainforests, sure. Fetch the Thundering Falls in the end step. I am just about out of interaction. I'd love a Snapcaster Mage, a Tidebinder. Titania, are you good? I will keep Titania. She hits pretty hard. Probably not as hard as literally any creature in their deck, though. Get back, Misty Rainforest. Play Titania. I'm going to play her first, because when I fetch for the land to play Questing Druid, I gain two life. And the Argoth is in play. So I can flip into Gaia's Rage. What is this? Gaia Incarnate. Next upkeep. A Forest, Questing Druid. Uh, hope I don't die to some shit on Inkmoth Nexus this turn. Visage is the card that would really bring it home for me here. That's if I can find one of those, get it looping with Ren. Planar Genesis is a big dig for that. What does this even do? Vige Reach Trample Haste. Versus Saga. What's your last card? If it's Arcbound Ravager, I could be in trouble. This has Reach. I will block so fast. Secret Reach. Secret Reach. Secret Reach. Revitalizing Repest. But a plus one counter on target creature gains indestructible. Okay, so this is actually just plus a thousand, plus five, plus five. All right, cool. They may have known about reach and just didn't care. That's a powerful card for this deck. Wowie. Okay, I'm still very in the market for a Besaju here. Day's Undoing. Okay, Planar Genesis. Let's try to do something here. Planar Genesis buffs Questing Druid. And this is just an impulse at this point. I have plenty of lands. It was not a useful impulse. This lightning bolt would have been good last turn. The ship has kind of sailed. I will take the lightning bolt, though. That is the best card here. Ren can return Misty Rainforest to my hand. I am not going to daze undoing and refill their hand. I can't do it. I won't do it. And now they're in a spot where two things are possible. They can rip a card that just kills me. Something that puts... Even one counter on Ink Moth Nexus becomes four counters. I guess that doesn't quite kill me. They probably have to start putting damage on Ren, though, so I don't emblem up. Or they could put me on a two-turn clock with poison. Okay, yeah, they're going for the two-turn clock. Respectable. That means I get to Planar Genesis for my graveyard next turn. I'm going to get Ketria Triome just to get that out of the deck and have the best mana to play the game with next turn. This is going to come down to this. Snapcaster. I can bolt snap bolt the ink moth. Okay, I'm gonna emblem Ren. And I can retrace planar genesis right now. If I find the Basaju, that's the best thing. And I can still bolt snap bolt with the mana I have left. Alright. I don't even know if that's gonna be good enough, so I better find the, the Basaju. Because they can probably get Zabaz or some shit that just kills me. Okay, Narsa, no, Tashana's Tidebinder, maybe. Does this turn off the abilities of lands? Artifact creature or planeswalker, it does not. Damn. Okay, I will still take Tidebinder, though. 
This just feels like I'm dead no matter what I do. Bolt, snap bolt, additional bolt. I think the bonus bolt is the most useful thing. They can't make a construct. Yeah, I'm going to attack for three. But if I bolt them three times right now, so three, six, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15. I'm just shy of lethal here. Yeah, this would be seven, seven plus another nine. Yeah, just shy. Okay. All right, I'll put the shields up and hope I'm not dead. I think I just lose to Zabaz, though. Is that, is that right? This welding jar has just stunlocked the Brotherhood's end in my hand. Springleaf Drum activates Ink Moth Nexus. Okay, the double bolt will fish out the welding jar. Lightning bolt. I can actually beat the welding jar here with the, using the extra bolt. Okay, snap bolt. Like, I bolt, they weld in response, I bolt, and their thing is actually gone. And then the Brotherhood's End can name Artifact and clear the construct. Let's go. Bolt, snap, bolt, gaming. The best modern gameplay there has ever been, or will ever be. And I just have nine power in play. Oh, I drew a bolt. I drew a bolt. All right, nine. This is 13, 14, 15. Yeah, the Ren is lethal. Because the Ren buffs the Druid. Feels one to them. Bolt you. This is exactly 11. What a game. That was crazy. Okay, pick your poisons. Meltdown coming in like crazy here. Disruptor Flute's interesting. And Disruptor Flute kind of gives me like Surgical Extraction vibes in that you can name a situation versus any deck where this card is good. But I think against this deck in particular, it's actually good because Ravager, Ink Moth, Zabaz, Urza Saga, there's so many things to name. Yeah, I'm in for Flute. Unfortunately, it gets caught up in my own Brotherhood's Ends and if I melt down for two. But it's more about having the most interaction than specifically... Like if I'm planning for a game where it's like, oh no, I drew Brotherhood's End, Meltdown, and Disruptor Flute. I'm probably winning and doing okay. Once again, another matchup where Narsa does not hang. Spell Pierce is not that good. It counters the, the setup cards like Hardened Scales, but most of the deck is creatures after that. I like Snare and Scolding. I like Ren. Planar Genesis a little slow. Titania's Reach and Life Gain were both relevant that game. Brazen Borrower is great. I think it's just more Narsets. God, sorry, Narset. I'm trying, girl. I'll leave one in just for the lock potential, but I do actually think it's bad. I could cut a counter spell and try to play to the board a little more. I think that's where I want to be. Endurance is another reach blocker with a big butt. I, I don't think that's what I want to do. This is where I'm going. In Agatha Soul Cauldron is a thing this deck can play where endurance is relevant, but I have all this artifact destruction in. Oh, this hand sucks. This is just all mid-game recoup and no early game interaction. I'll look in that. Okay, this one's much better. I'll keep it and get rid of the second Ren and Six. Beseju Ozolith. Okie dokie. The third Ren and Six has arrived. Urza Saga. Patches of Hulahan. Well, that means I can get the Red Blue Surveil Land. <laughs> Binning the one Narset I left in the deck. Sorry, Narset, I love you. And redrawing Ren and Six. Cool. All right. My hand is as awkward as possible, but we do have a bunch of powerful sideboard cards and stuff in the deck. We can still play here. We will see how this shakes out. Another Saga. Activating Saga does not put a plus one counter on Automaton. Okay, cool. Now I've just ripped an answer to one of the constructs. Yeah, I think I'm just going to stifle the, the construct here and try to... Keep the board empty. Yeah, this keeps a 3-3 three, three out of play, which will quickly become a 5-5. Five, five. It also puts a 3-2 in play that it can tango with Patchwork Automaton. It does tap me out, but I'm not holding really up interaction anyway. Construct as a 3-3. Three, three. They could get Zabaz. They could get Springleaf Drum. They could Pithing Needle Ren in 6. They could Pithing Needle Paseju. Springleaf Drum it is. Oh, they have this card too. Target creature gets plus two, plus two. Fights something you don't control. It's also a land. 
Agatha Soul Cauldron, also Walking Ballista, and immediately Patchwork Automaton goes from zero to hero. They even have good attacks and everything here. Can't block. Yeah, they just did a little too much for my hand to keep up with. I mean, that's not bad, but it's not helpful either because the the ballist or the whatever this thing is, the Soul Cauldron has already done the most important thing. I guess I'll put. Oh, I can't even cast Ren because of my mana spread. Yeah, I drew two mono blue lands and three Ren and Sixes after bottoming a Ren and Six. Yeah, we're not winning this game. I needed that to unroll a little smoother than it did. Okay. Game three. That's why we play best of three. Trying back in. Brotherhood's End, Lands, Interaction, Keep. Misty, Go. Hardened Scales, Resolves. I'm going to get Hedge Maze here. No, I'm going to get Thundering Falls. I can access green if I need to. Don't want a Misty Reinforced. Just having double red available is nice. I'll sandbag the Argoth. It's really tough to make this Argoth come into play untapped. That's kind of a huge cost in the deck, even if we did last game threaten a Titania arrival. Okay, this comes in as a 2-2. Two -two. I can bolt this now, or I can sweep it up in the Brotherhood's End at some point. I'm just going to bolt it. They ping me for two, but at least it's gone. And then I can fetch Hedge Maze. Stern Scolding. I'll take it. Shock and Steam Vents to cover the most bases and pass. Another Scales. Okay, this is still a 0-0 zero -zero on the stack. I'll take that opportunity to put it in the graveyard. Snapcaster is really good. Snap Scolding, Snap Bolt, both live here. Starting to turn it around, but they still have a handful of cards. Ohulahan dies to Brotherhood's End. I could also just Snap Counter this. Yeah, I'm going to do that. Why get greedy? Stern Scolding. Gandalf is just yelling at these artifact creatures like crazy right now. Arcbound Rapture. That one's better than the other ones we've countered. Welding Jar. A Brazen Borrower does a lot here. I could just make a 2-2 bear and mill three cards. That's not what I'm going to do, but it is available. They are empty. These are all the cards that they have access to. I think I'm just going to pass and hold up Brazen Borrower. I'm actually fine just blocking here to absorb some damage. Versus Saga. Countering this ability doesn't matter. I might counter the next one. And I think I want a Petty Theft now and then flash in and start beating with Brazen Borrower. You can get my basic island and start applying pressure. They bring the beats. Now I actually have a really interesting decision to make, because I could make a bear here, and then let the saga run its course and do a giant cleanup with Brotherhood's End and then Tidebinder the, the Welding Jar and just plan this out multiple turns. I am going to do that. I'm going to make a bear. A little scary, but they uh, we're working with perfect information right now. Ravager's back. Counterspell. Does this matter? Just going to fly in with Brazen Borrower. Leave bear back to chump. I can Tidebinder the Arcbound, or the, what is this called? Modular Trigger. If they try to push some crazy Hardened Scales combo lethal nonsense on me. And then Brotherhood's End. Cleans up everything next turn. That's the plan anyway. We'll see if it works. But I have Tidebinder plus Counterspell to survive this turn. If I have to Tidebinder this turn, then I don't have it for next turn to counter the Welding Jar. But if I Tidebinder something this turn, it probably means the Ravager's out of play. I don't know, this is getting exciting. I got Zabaz. I'm going to block Arcbound Ravager and see if they try to push lethal. They didn't. All right, Brotherhood's End, I need you to bring it home. Cast another artifact I could kill. Oh no, probably not that one. Uh, this does, what does this even do? I could counterspell this to keep up the pressure. Yeah, I think I should just counter this. I have to keep attacking. Oh wait, with the Ravager, I'm probably dead to that anyway. Okay, yeah. Yeah, let's counter that card that kills me, 100%. Okay, destroy all artifacts with mana value 3 or less. Red, red, colorless. I'm prepared to counter a Welding Jar. Activation. With Tidebinder. And then hope that their last card in hand is not extremely good. 
Okay, they're feeding stuff to the Ravager. It is going to be fudge enormous. Okay, you've got a 1515 that I will now obliterate. The Tide Binder. My three turn plan has come to fruition here. Counter the jar. Kill the 1717 Ravager. It has nowhere to deposit its tokens. And Express Federation was a pretty good follow up draw, too. Let's see what they got. There's two scales in play. Something like Ballista's really good. Something like uh, the Hangerback Walker's really good. Dismember, I don't care that much about. Okay, yeah, if their game that turn was Dismember Pass, I'm actually in a really good position. AI, reload, reload. The deck's doing its thing. Come on. Meltdown and Snapcaster. Snapcaster is not quite lethal. I could... Snapcaster EI, but my mana is super green heavy. I could put Meltdown in my hand and then snap. Pick your poison. I could put Ottawara in my hand and then snap. Bolt. Yeah, I'll put Ottawara in hand. Bottom Meltdown, Exile Snapcaster. And I'm just going to attack first and see what happens. Okay, attack for three. And then Snap Bolt puts them to one. Snap. Pick your poison, gets rid of one of the hardened scales. I can't snap EI with a land drop still up. And I would just have one blue or one green left after that, which doesn't cast any spells that I have. Yeah, okay. I'm just going to bolt them. Okay, put you to one with two lethal creatures and Ottawa that can clear a blocker next turn. No nonsense, please. Fingers crossed. Yeah, if their hand is like Patchwork Automaton and Agatha Soul Cauldron, I might be in trouble. All right, cool. We got away with it. GG's. On to the next round. Welcome to TopDeck.GG, your community's home for everything competitive magic has to offer. If you're hosting an event, playing for a huge prize, or advertising your events to thousands of players, we've got you covered. Using intuitive pairing software, playing magic is a breeze. Players just have to sign up online, then scan the QR code in store. Give competitors the gift of perfect information as their bracket updates in real time. The self-reporting software saves you time and leaves paper match slips in the past. Leave the heavy lifting to topdeck.gg so your community can relax and focus on playing Magic. I'm on the draw for round number four. I'm going to keep my hand. It has a bunch of interaction in it and a way to recoup. And we've got some Tron in the chat. I'll lead on my Misty Rainforest. And we'll see if they are some sort of low to the ground prison Tron deck where this Brotherhood's End is going to be awesome, or are they Big Tron where none of this shit matters at all? Yep, just a uh, natural Tron off of a Cap 7. Or I guess it's not natural, they have the map, but quick wrap to Tron off of a Cap 7. Thundering Falls, let's get the red set up. Beseju, what a miracle. Okay, Flooded Grove, Filter Green, Green. Besage you this tower out of here. Okay. Let's break it down. Make them play normal. At least for a little while. As normal as a Tron player is capable of. They're not normal people. They're sick. Sick freaks. And they just immediately have Tron again. Oh, but they left the expedition map exposed. This looks like a really good opportunity to Brotherhood's End, actually. Destroy all artifacts with mana value 3 or less. This is pretty aggressive, and I hope it doesn't bite me, but that did just take a Talisman and their route to Tron away. Drazi Temple. My thoughts. I imagine they'll take Questing Druid, but Brazen Bar is also alive. Yeah, Questing Druid's gone. Old W6 is here. Little, little behind, but it'll do the thing. Okay, um... Cephala Coliseum will be my land. Green, red. Pick up Boseju. And I can bounce the Thought Not Seer. And if they just slam an Urza's Tower into play here, it, it's fine. They, they got me. I can't afford to Boseju just in case they hit Tron and also protect Ren and Six from Thought Not Seer. I didn't have enough, or I did have enough red. I could have minused and bolted shit. That would have been so much better. Yeah, I just uh, focused on the Besaju a little too much. Minus plus bolt is the play there. I blew it. 
And they did just rip a fucking tower. Oh my god, these animals. Tron players don't know how to live in society. Okay, you win. <laughs> just break up Tron three times. I still get thought seized into Ulamog. Okay, uh, Damping Sphere, very obviously for this matchup. I could get Disruptor Flute and like name Expedition Map or Oblivion Stone or something that they might have like that. I just don't think Lightning Bolt is where my life needs to be. Disruptor Flute can also name Karn the Great Creator. Pick Your Poison is interesting because you'll frequently have an artifact to eat, but those aren't the cards you really need to stop out of them. This does appear to be kind of bigger Green Tron. More than the, the Lord of the Ground Prison or Eldrazi Tron. I mean, we saw a Thought Not Sierra, so there's obviously some Eldrazi in there. What does that actually mean? Stern Scolding's not going to counter anything. Spell Snare and Spell Pierce all seem terrible, actually. Subtlety seems great across the board against all the things their deck plays. And I could get a Pick Your Poison in here for good measure. I actually do want to keep the Narsets and Days Undoings in here, because I'm going to need to do something big and stupid to win. Force of Negation, are you better than any cards I'm currently playing? Titania doesn't matter. And if Titania is out, so is Argoth. I'm comfortable with that. Let's go. I can keep this. My plan is to fetch Stomping Ground. That opens up the most options as the game unfolds here. Hers is mine. I don't have a commercial district in the deck. I'm just going to get the Stomping Ground. Rather than try to mess around with color spreads that might not get me where I need to go. Planar Genesis is an instant, so I can wait and see what's going on before I do anything with that. Mine plant. It's just natty droning me. Genesis. These are all not lands. I will take this counter spell. Zap in Breeding Pool and pass. Does land come into play untapped? Nope, it's tapped. Okay. Ugin's Labyrinth. It's not an Urza's Tower. It does tap for two, though. The One Ring, I think I'd rather pick the poison and kill this and let them have the cantrip than spend a, a hard counter on it. Planar Genesis again. I will besage you into play. No, besage you to my hand. Decline, but besage you in my hand. Do I even want besage you? Is Collapsing Tron what I need to be doing here? Yeah, besage you still seems really good. Okay, that's in my hand. I love a Tidebinder. That makes me wonder if I should be poisoning this ring. I think I still should be. Sacrifice an artifact. Okay, I've got a bunch of options here, but Tron still has six cards in hand and they're just ramming stuff. Okay, another ring. I hope they tap it right away. I'm just gonna counter the protection trigger. They get to draw a card this way, but at least they can't make me play off mana if they have Tidebinder in mind. Like, if they just don't draw a card with the ring and pass, then I just have this three mana hanging out there doing nothing. Ooh, big moves, big moves. Okay. How do I want to use this now? Red, blue, expressive iteration. I can put flute in my hand, steam vents on the bottom, exile hedge maze, play hedge maze as my land for turn. Ren and six, I'm extremely interested in having access to. And do I hold up Counterspell for a turn? I think I do, rather than just slam the Damping Sphere. One, two, three, four, five, six. Yeah. I'm going to hold up Counterspell. Because they don't have Tron yet. If they play Tower here, I'll wish I had Damping Sphere in play. That didn't happen. Okay, sweet. Now they're just passing. I can besage you the Power Plant to make sure Tron doesn't come out, ever. This does unlock Colored Mana, which they might find useful. But I'd rather just make sure I don't get Tronned. Oh, what's going on here? This is a Eldrazi command, or whatever that shit's called. Kozilex command. Yeah, I'm just getting smoked when I could have held up Counterspell, and now I'm going to lose to the One Ring. I have the Flute. I can Flute One Ring and then play Damping Sphere and still hold up Counterspell. But this was a pretty bad interaction for me. Okay, they're making a shitload of zero ones and digging for a card rather than unlocking their ring. I'll take that. This is a lot of mana, though. If they just, like, put Ulamog on the stack next turn, I'm in trouble. All right, well, I don't need to flute. That's good news. I can go 
Red Green, get back Paseju, play Ottawara, and cast Damping Sphere. I should have attacked first. Maybe they chump block if they don't know they need the mana. Okay, what do they do with their scry? One top, five bottom. Okay, so there's no reason to besage you now to force a shuffle because they've already been through the pile. They still have 11 mana here because of the spawns. It looks like they're trying to cast a four drop and forgot that Ugin's Labyrinth doesn't tap for two. Karn the Great Creator. Okay, this is a situation where I can flute and just name Karn. Save my counter spell for something scarier. Karn the Great Creator cannot be activated. They do still have seven mana. They have eight mana. Okay, playing a fresh one ring. That is annoying. I guess I just attack Karn, because attacking them doesn't do anything here. Attack Karn. Then I'm going to destroy their Ugin's Labyrinth before they can get Worldbreaker back. Just in case. Get back the Beseju. Ooh, something's happening. Do they have Graveyard Hate? What's going on here? I did consider when... Like, the last decision I made when I was tuning this deck was if I'm going to put two Obsidian Charmas in the sideboard. And it seems like you probably want them. I've mostly been focusing on Legacy since MH3 came out, so getting to see all of these things, the Kozilex Command, the Ugin's Labyrinth, all of it working together is pretty powerful. Oh my god. <laughs> they sacked all their Eldrazi and then unsacked them again. Whatever this is. T -t Today, Junior. Exile target creature and exile up to X cards from graveyards. Okay. So this, why did they exile target creature with mana value X or less when they could have scried one and drawn a card? What's happening here? What? They could have even made an Eldrazi. What? Why, would, why is that mode selected? X equals one? I literally don't understand. Okay. I think having counterspell in my hand is worth more than than that. Steam Vents tapped and passed the turn. Obviously, Besage is a powerful card versus Tron, especially when you're looping it, but when they have a one ring going, kind of normal interaction is out the window anyway. Another Labyrinth. Did not exile anything. Seven in the pool, the old Null Drifter. I mean, that card is awesome, and I commend you for playing it. I have to counter it, though. And now I'm basically out of gas here. I need a big draw, something to really make this happen. Narset would actually be awesome here. Or no, I don't quite have Threshold, so Narset doesn't matter. I would have to Narset into a spell I can cast, and then I could start Colosseuming. That is not a Narset or a spell I can cast. I'll get back Scalding Tarn, and I'm going to go face with my attack. If they can remove Disruptor Flute and unlock Karn, power to them. But I do need to cheese damage over the finish line here. Let Ring become a liability. Though I can't imagine the 10 cards in their hand can't cast something powerful. With even one land, they have 9 mana even through the Damping Sphere. There's Power Plant. Still don't have Tron. Still doesn't matter as long as Sphere's in play. Yikes. Okay, uh, they're playing Mycospawn, Conqueso... Exiling my Cephalid Colosseum, and I don't have Threshold, so there's nothing I can do about it, and Tutoring Land. That should probably do it. This creature is big enough to beat my Tidebinder. Now Narset is a significantly worse draw. I'd still take it, because it digs for more stuff. It's crazy to me that in Modern Horizons 3 design, when they were thinking about what decks need a boost, who should we focus on? They decided Eldrazi Tron is a deck that needs help or needs a bunch of cool new cards or needs to be pushed back to the four. Just truly heinous stuff. Thundering Falls finds EI. Okay, that's a spell I can cast. I am going to be slightly gated by my own damping sphere at this point, but I gotta do what I gotta do. Ugh. I guess besage you to my hand. Force a negation to the bottom, exile Scalding Tarn. Play Scalding Tarn. I now have Threshold, but my, my thing is gone. I think the best thing Ren can do is deal one to them and try to get this ring to kill them. And I'm just going to chill with Besaju in my hand and hope they die to their own stuff. I have no plan to kill them. No ability to win the game here. Okay, they got a bunch of mana in the end step. Make some Dinguses, target player scries X. Okay. 
You got it. Made two Jenkinses. Scry two. They bottom bottomed. Okay. Saying there's a chance. Somehow seeing three quarters of their deck. They have not found a win condition yet. And they just tapped their ring up to four, which means they have to either play a new ring, gain life, or kill me. I hope they cast an Ulamog and have to exile their own one ring. That would be great. All my bolts are in the sideboard. It's a shame because they would actually be awesome here. Okay, Ulamog. They do have to exile their own one ring. Life is good. Uh, that was uh, my whole plan to win the game, though. Ulamog's in play. Ten times are a problem. I need to find, what, Brazen Borrower? Which isn't even really an answer to anything. Oh, now that they've attacked me, what do I need to do here? EI into Red and Six and Brazen Borrower? I catch your Triumphs in play. Come on, deck. I need to EI or Seek the Beast or Narset. I need to do multiple things this turn. And doing multiple things is hard under my own Damping Sphere. Well, let's start Seeking Beasts. Two good spells. Two good spells. Two good spells. Subtlety and EI. Well, subtlety doesn't help. And EI being my second spell, this Damping Sphere is gonna ruin my life. I did find Narset. Brotherhood's End doesn't matter. Alright, yep, GG. Completely outmuscled by Tron. Like I said, when I was considering the deck, uh, a couple of Charmaws might be nice, both to add to the clock and for the disruption element of it. Like they were kind of floundering for a couple turns there. I just couldn't do a lot of damage. Maybe I should have recognized that tempoing them out is my game plan and not cut all my bolts. Maybe I'm supposed to cut like my planar genesis is and days on doings and just get lower and try to deal damage. I don't know. Lesson learned. On to the final round. We're a few rounds into the video. Thanks for sticking with me. Friendly reminder that if you're still here and having fun, smash that subscribe button. And if you want to play what I'm playing, you can use my affiliate link for TCG Player to support the channel while you shop for cards, and you can try any deck anytime with a cardhoarder.com loan account for Magic Online. All these links are in the video description below. Now back to the league. I'm on the draw for the final round. That is five die rolls lost. I'm going to keep my hand. All right, we're playing against Eldrazi again. They have a Devourer of Destiny to start the game. You may reveal this card from your opening hand. If you do, at the beginning of your first upkeep, look at the top cards, four cards of your library. You may put one of those cards on top, exile the rest. When you cast a spell, exile target permanent. That's one or more colors. So that's kind of like a weird backdoor take on Once Upon a Time. But it's also a creature. Can we revenge versus Eldrazi? Ugin's Labyrinth. And we know they have at least one thing in their deck to use with this. Trinosphere, cool. Good thing I'm on the draw again. It would be nice to counterspell that. Okay, I'm going to get Thundering Falls and start trying to set up my... I will actually keep Ren and Six. Try to set up a future Brotherhood's End, break out of this Trinosphere. Cavern of Souls, all right. What manner of hell is raining down upon me now? Wumpus Aberration. When you cast a spell... If Colorless wasn't spent to cast it, target opponent may put a creature card from their hand onto the battlefield. Okay. Well, Colorless was obviously spent to cast it. I'm going to get Hedge Maze here. Bin Scalding Tarn. I have Ren and Six in my hand. I don't need more lands. Lightning Bolt sucks. Ren and Six just dies. Everything just dies here. I am going to pass because nothing works. Yeah, the Trinisphere is really good. Losing this die roll was devastating. If I counterspell the Trinisphere, then I can like Planar Genesis plus spell, and maybe I can keep up with this 6 6 somehow. Probably still unlikely that I could beat a 6 6. One of the weaknesses that I knew about this deck when I was building it and tuning it is just a creature with more than three toughness. And I talked about that with Barrett when we had our session where we discussed this deck. And it was like, you could play Unholy Heat, but then you probably have to play some artifacts or enchantments like like a bobble or two or a seal of fire or something just like something to give yourself a chance to have delirium on time oh my god this was kicked all right yeah uh we don't need to keep playing this game all right obliterated subtlety seems really important pick your poison seems reasonable damping sphere obviously meltdown probably in Lightning Bolting, their face is maybe a game plan. Planar Genesis seems bad. 
Right, I have more bad cards than good ones at this point. That means I get two of these bolts back. I'd really like to do the Narset thing at least once in this league. Do we think we can maybe do it? I know it seems so unlikely to, for that to work out in this matchup. I'll keep this hand on the play this time. Counterspell works. They have Gemstone Cavern and Tavara of Destinies. It's turn zero. It's I get to go first. They've already done two things. Exile to Trinisphere. Okay. Or play Ketria Trium and pass. The Power of Destiny triggers. Exiled Talisman of Impulse. All right, Ugin's Labyrinth. They could still three ball me here. Yikes. Okay. Uh, yep. On the play with Counterspell in my hand. So there's still just a Trinisphere in my hand before I, or in play before I have two mana up. Powerful stuff. What's the follow up? Am I getting Whomped again? Pompous Wumpist. Prismatic Vista fetching waste is the biggest middle finger I've ever seen in my life. Yep. The Wumpus. The mighty Humpus Wumpus. Damping Sphere. Completely irrelevant at this point. Uh, I will have them sacrifice an artifact and pretend I have any chance to play this game. Yeah, if this shit is going on in modern, you got to be a lot more aggressive with uh, you're attacking these colorless Eldrazi and Ugin's Labyrinth Stumpy decks than this deck is even capable of. I honestly don't even know if, if, if Obsidian Charma solves this problem. It's at least big enough to trade with Thought Not Seer, but we need better interaction. Like, I'm just ice cold to a 6-6. Not a thing I can beat. Even if they draw and cast zero cards for us in this game, these two creatures will kill me. Drowner of Truth as land mode. And they exiled one of my counter spells, meaning they do still kind of care about stuff going on in this game which seems unlikely all right i mean i'll cast the stamping sphere and then just fucking die all right yep not well set up for this one and they still have a spell anyway kozlex command they're gonna draw a card they're gonna make some eldrazi dinguses i have to somehow stabilize versus wumpus aberration and thought not seer right now lightning bolt certainly not it okay complete crushing a 2-3 and three record with this deck. A few different things happened here. Number one, being on the draw in all games with something that is in its control deck, but it has tempo elements like the soft counters, like the Tashana's Tidebinder, like getting red and six down before the, we're already behind on board. All those things suffer massively from being on the draw. And I mean, that's, that's just variance, whatever. As far as construction... The big problem was in the matchup spread we found, and probably in the format at large, Narset just doesn't do anything. If Narset was like this great card you could play in the format, and then Cephalic Coliseum just loops its way back around into a hard lock once you have control of the game, that would be one thing. But if Narset is also a largely unplayable card in the format, then the thing we're building towards we'll end up more like we take one off our land some large percentage of the time and this card doesn't work and isn't good. Another thing is we are just wildly unprepared for the various Eldrazi stuff, the MH3 Eldrazi stuff. We saw the Stompy Eldrazi Trinisphere build. We also saw actual Tron, neither of which were close to competitive. I thought we had a chance in that game two in the final round where we were on the play with multiple counter spells and the means to cast them, but my opponent had three mana on turn one, and then I didn't cast spells and died. As far as what to do with this deck, first of all, I think Days Undoing just shouldn't be in the deck. I added that late. Like, I just wanted a little more to do with Narset. Like, I wanted to be able to Narset into something that can slam and win. Because if you don't have a Coliseum, Narset can't dig for it. I guess Narset can find Planar Genesis, which can dig for Colosseum, but there's no straight line there. Narset can dig for Days Undoing and just hit the eject button. However, like I said to start this debrief, if Narset isn't even good and comes out in some large percentage of matchups, then Days Undoing is completely indefensible. And when you're doing the control plan of going one for one with your opponent until you start going two for one and you eventually run them out of cards, which is what happened in all the games that we won. You're not casting a raw days undoing. You need Narset for this card to be remotely playable. So that was a misbuild on my part. This should not be here. It should be some modern playable interaction card. 
Argoth was terrible. Just comes into play tapped at all times. If I wanted that, I would play two Catria Triomes. I underestimated how terrible this thing coming into play tapped and only tapping for green are. I think this card is worse than Basic Forest, even with the Titania in the deck. We made one bear. We did threaten to meld. It almost happened. But I don't think this is a card that we need, even if we do want the passive life game of Titania. That should be out. And maybe we got to figure out how to make Unholy Heat work in this deck, because the Wumpus being 6-6, six, six, just showing up, and guess what? Deck's Ice Cold. The only thing I can do is double bolt it in my entire deck, or Brazen Borrow it, and it'll be back next turn, but temporary reprieve. Like, two dress downs give you a card that you wouldn't be embarrassed to play, but also add a card type to the deck. I don't think we want something like seal of fire just to add a card type i don't think we want to play bobble either we don't have any self mill except the argoth that i decided shouldn't be in the deck i guess hedge maze and thundering falls are a little bit of that so we do actually have a little bit of self mill yeah i would want to try to make unholy heat work if i were going to keep working on this deck you also just need a better plan to protect narset than this deck currently provides I think we need better removal too. Like, I don't know if we go four color to then add like Supreme Verdict to the, the list, uh, or we could build it kind of like an Omnath deck and have access to Solitudes. And maybe this whole shell is just trying to be too clever. What if we just take four color Omnath and add two Cephalid Coliseums and two Narsets to it? That's already a Ren and Six deck. It supports excellent removal and powerful threats in the format and then we just add this other angle that can lock people out in the late game that might be a better way to approach this but all that said sorry we didn't get to do the narset thing when the deck is built around a structural disadvantage in the format it makes it harder to do the thing even though i do really try to do the thing in a league when i'm asked to do a thing and we did make put two wins on the board it's not like we're just 05 with a completely unfunctional deck. The the spells, just the interactive bolt snap bolt gameplay was really fun. Expressive variation and questing druid are really good. Counter spells really good. Ren six really good. This deck's full of good cards. We just have to arrange them better to support the Narset if that's what we want to be doing. Diz, thank you for submitting this brew challenge. Barrett, thank you for working with me on the deck. Everyone, thanks for watching. Be sure to like, comment, subscribe, check out the Patreon, and I'll see you next time.